This is Terry Leroy from Killington Pit. And you're watching We Go to 11 with Ruben Mosquetta. Uh, Why don't you just make 10 louder and make 10 be the top number and make that a little louder? These go to 11. Let's do it. All right. Hey, Ter Terry. So I, I'm actually familiar with some of your work because, uh, years ago, I guess my, I was just kind of backpedaling last night because I dug up the, uh, titanium black, uh, oh, album now at Michael the time. Yeah, yeah. 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 So at that time, I think I was doing some stuff for the, this Canadian website, uh, pivotal rage. And I think you had somehow your publicist or whoever was uh, helping you plug that record sent us a copy and they go, Hey, we want a physical copy. And they did send it. And, uh, oh, I, wound up I wound up connecting with you at some point shortly thereafter. And we had a pretty good conversation related to the, to the album and stuff. But I was like, Oh yeah. Just, I, I, you know, I, I think I vaguely remember all of that. And when I saw your name again, I was like, why do I know that name? I, I know well, you know, the other thing yeah. that happened, I think shortly after the discussion, I think you made your way out to Portland. I because I think you're into the the jewelry thing, right? Uh, is that the proper way to to describe yeah, it? Yeah, well, well, yeah. So that's that's yeah, that was my side hustle for years, mm -hmm. which is like one of my primary jobs right now. In right. fact, that's my backdrop. Oh, there you go. Studio, at my house when I do zooms, I have my music stuff and right. when I'm at, at the, the jewelry company, I have this is my studio, <laughs> my jewelry oh, company. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And so you had made it out and I think I actually caught up with you at some point because I think you had were doing some sightseeing and you were out in the Columbia River Gorge and you had gone up to Crown yeah. Point. Crown Point. Yeah. I was in Trump. Right. Now I totally remember. Yes. How geeky is that? The that's, other cool thing amazing. that I that I that you did is with the promo copy of the album, I think you threw in like a piece of jewelry. I don't know what the proper name is for it, but it's one <laughs> it of those. Was a, it, was a cap, it was a captive bead ring made of titanium. And I still have all that stuff. So go figure, years later, 20, 20 years later? 20 years that later? That is 20 years later. That is, is insane. <laughs> that It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but what, time time flies, I guess. <laughs> it really does. Wow, that's crazy. That That's so cool that you have that. You know, ra rarely does anybody... Uh, bring that up or mention it. And I, I mentioned titanium black to some folks and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, cool. I'll check it out. But like you actually, yeah. You know. Yeah. Wild. You know. So let's get talking <laughs> about Killington Pit it. because, Hell well, yeah. you, you know, you've, you've uh, resurfaced now with this. Obviously you've done uh, Granny Four Barrel, which I'll ask you a little bit about that as well, but sure, Killington sure. Pit. So uh, how did you get these guys together? Because you assembled uh, like basically a super group around you of all these musicians that have worked yeah, with some of these a, other bigger musicians. You know, a, yeah, it's a great privilege yeah. uh, to be playing with these guys. It's amazing. But really, the pandemic is what kind of you know presented the opportunity, if you will, because um, at the time I was touring with Granny Four Barrel. Mm -hmm. And um, and then the the other guys that are in Killing that they were doing their things, with, right? You know, Alice Cooper and, and Evanescence. And um, yeah, when we got shut down, I was in the writing process with David Bendis, producer David Bendis. Right, right. And we were working on some granny tracks or mm -hmm. tracks otherwise for another project. We were just writing. And when everything got shut down, we're all just standing here going, what are we doing next? Like, what's going on with the music industry? Like, is this the end of the world? What, like, what's happening? Right. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I said, well, hey, can, let's, you know, I want to keep recording. You know, let's, we'll do virtual stuff, whatever we got to do. We'll just do it through the, you know, emails. So let's, let's, uh, what, let's do a cover. Mm -hmm. And the tie into the, the cover was that the last show before the pandemic that I played was at the Whiskey. Uh, with Granny Four Barrel yeah. and Wendy Dio was there. We were there for a week because we were going <laughs> to do the Bowl for Ronnie event. All right. And Wendy was at the show, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. And we played stand up and shout for her. She loved it. And so I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to 
since we're not, well, well, let me back up a second. So mm-hmm. after the show, she was like, boy, I really would love it if you guys could play the Ride for Ronnie event in May of 2020. That's the 10th year mm-hmm. the anniversary of his passing. And we said, absolutely, we're all in. So anyways, that never happened. Mm-hmm. But while we were on pandemic shutdown, I was still kind of in Ronnie Dio mode. And I'm like, well, why don't we just record a cover? Let's do stand up and show. Let's donate it to charity. Let's mm-hmm. keep the thing going anyways, in mm-hmm. our own way. So that's kind of how that started. But when I reached out to Bendis, I was like, hey, who do we get? Because the Granny Four Barrel guys, they were kind of doing their own thing. And David and I had talked about Will Hunt uh, numerous times about having them come in and play some drums on some original tracks. And uh, so his name came up again. And we were also doing writing with Aaron Polly from Mice and Men. Oh, right. So his name came up and he's like, oh, I'll play bass. And Will's like, I'll play drums. So we did the charity. But then Troy Mm -hmm. jumped in on it from Evanescence. And we did that under the name Leroy 13 as kind of, it's just a one-off. Right. Going to do a cover, do it for charity. Mm -hmm. Pandemic's going to be over soon. Sure. We're all going to do our things. (laughs) End of the story. Well, right. it happened. Yeah. So the longer the pandemic went on, we just kept keeping busy. Hey, let's do another cover. And we all had, you know, we're kind of in the same age group. We all grew up with the same classic rock tastes. Right. right. So we started throwing songs into the, into the hat and we just kept recording covers mm-hmm. until we had pretty much a full album's worth of covers. But then that, here we are now, that's 2020. Now here we are, 2024, four years later. Uh, we've all become friends. We now have a band. We're now writing original material. That's oh, wow. the story. <laughs> oh wow! So there's there's new uh, new original material coming up as well. Absolutely. So the oh, next nice. release, the next releases that you see will be Killington Pit original music. I mean, what a great way to set this up. I mean, because you did uh, balls to the wall. Yeah, the yeah. King, and then uh, writing on the wind, and then next thing is going to be new original stuff. Yes, yes, yeah. very exciting, very exciting. And we've got, um, at minimum, we'll put out an original EP. Nice. You know, the original plan, yeah, the original plan was hey, let's just do a covers album, mm-hmm. you know, let's do some accompanying videos. A lot of the songs that sure. we did didn't have videos back in the day. I mean, Balls uh-huh. to the Wall did. Kill the King obviously never had a video. That's right. like 1970, whenever that was, 76, right. mid-70s. Sure. Uh, Riding on the Wind, I never had a video. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be cool to reimagine? So we did that for all the songs that we've done. And uh, we were going to just kind of release a full covers record, which we still intend to do. Nice. But as we put this stuff out into the world, the covers... Mm-hmm. You know, not only are we asking ourselves, you know, hey, we really, this is a, this is a band now. Like we need to, mm-hmm. let's, we've been working on original material anyways. Okay. So, Cause Will and I, Will and I had been doing some things with Bendis. Oh, so it's okay. like, you know what? Let's, right. let's get this out into the pipeline. And now journalists are going, Hey, that's cool. You guys are doing covers and everything. But what about yeah. originals? Right. We got you. <laughs> okay. That's cool. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, I mean, in a way, it's kind of like the way bands start out doing covers and then they eventually start doing start doing original material, except, you know, we, we're, yeah. we're a little older, right? We're a little <laughs> bit older, yeah, a little more experienced. Nice. Yeah. Uh, out of curiosity, I mean, I know, uh, you know, Udo, not known as, you know, a virtuoso vocally, but, you know, th- that stuff has got to be hard to sing, you know, just because it, with that, vocal style and approach was it yeah well you know what's funny ruben so like the primary like vocalist you know udo is definitely an influence Mm -hmm. um i love udo's voice because it's just oh yeah i mean it sounds like you're being burned with scalding oil right he's got some crazy tones super like attack on his voice and i mean you know the big balls to the wall some of that mm-hmm. early stuff his voice was just like this this beautifully tortured sound <laughs> right <laughs> it was I, one of my favorite sounds and i would sing along to that stuff over the years a little bit but i was always like more like a priest guy mm-hmm. bruce dickinson uh ronnie dio that kind of stuff um but i started you know recently dabbling back in the accept stuff again and mm-hmm. and i've just 
kind of found strangely that over the years, I was kind of able to, to kind of emulate that to a degree and cha- channel Udo. So when we did, I honestly thought that that would be the song that was, yeah, it's cool. You did a cover of it, but I didn't think that it would turn out the way that it did. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's really spectacular. And, and, right. and, and the fact that Troy is you know, heavily influenced by that right. band and will like all the guys mm-hmm. Chuck, and then oh, yeah. we just put it together and it's just got an energy and a sound and we were like man this this is working so yeah i was able to kind of pull off a, a little bit of an udo thing but it's 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 in my range mm-hmm. um but there's yeah there's he's definitely <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's right. definitely a, a challenge to say sure. Well, and more challenges because then the other two tunes that you've released, I mean, pretty big name guys and, you know, their influence uh, straight across, you know, they've influenced hard rock, metal, you know, thrash, black metal folks. Um, Absolutely. You know, I mean, tackling Dio, I mean, what was, (laughs) I mean, did you shy away from that initially or did you go, let's go for it? And same with uh, Halford, because, you know, I mean, just those two tunes that, that, you know, kill the King and riding on the wind. I mean, wow. The yeah. vocal performances on those, you know, both the original and yours, pretty good stuff. I mean, it's, it, you, you, you did it in your own way. Appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The, well, the, the, the cool thing is, is that all of those singers that you mentioned, there's a certain range that they're singing in primarily, mm-hmm. and that that just happens to be my range. So, so any type of a singer that's a tenor that's kind of in that bracket, right? I can usually do, at least I can do it my own way, right? And some things tonally I can emulate even more because the tones are very similar. There's a few things that I that I do when I sing a certain note. And it'll sound like the same tone as Udo. Mm-hmm. Same with same with Halford. And and the Dio thing is, I don't know, maybe that's more like a kind of a regional dialect thing because right. I'm I'm in upstate New York mm. and Cortland, Ronnie Dio's yeah, hometown. Right. You know, we're kind yeah. of upstate. We have a certain way that we speak. So like and he's you know, he talked a certain way and mm-hmm. the way that you kind of articulate words. Uh so yeah, I mean, oh, I don't know. I I chose singers that then I can yeah. at least feel like I do a, a pretty decent job of. Um, there's certain right. singers I probably wouldn't be able to do justice to. Okay. Well, and, yeah. and you did mention Dickinson. I mean, did you guys tackle any Maiden out of curiosity? So we, we have a Maiden. So we are about to tackle a Maiden song. Oh. And uh, yeah, I think we're, we're going to do Children of the Damned because oh, wow. it's just, I always liked the Sebastian Bach's version of it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, yeah, uh, I've heard that. Yeah. And it's cool. It's it's like classic Bruce because it's I love the operatic kind mm-hmm. of ballad ballady part of it. But then it oh. gets real heavy. He's he's doing some grit and he's mm-hmm. you know he's way up there. There's the big grand ending with the high right. note and uh, just the just the um, the theme of the song. I don't know. There's something about that song. I always loved right. it. So we're gonna we're gonna keep that one on 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 deck. Yeah. How about yeah. how about any Queensryche? Would you tackle any Jeff Tate stuff? I would love I would love to do uh, some Queensryche. He's another fantastic singer, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, when you choose these things, we try not to do something that everybody else has done. Because right. when you search around, you can tell on YouTube. I mean, mm-hmm. Queen of the Right is a classic song, right? But there are so many versions of it. Not that we still couldn't do it. And you know they're you know new singer. I mean that guy's right. you know he's fantastic. He's perfect. Um, but I, I you know probably anything. I don't know, maybe take hold of the flame. I would do. Yeah. I would do. Uh, maybe something off Rage for Order. Who knows? Nice. I don't know. Yeah. Rage for I'm down. I, don't, I mean Operation Mindcrime. I don't know. Just pick one. Oh yeah. <laughs> no kidding. I mean there's a lot of great stuff there. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Covers. Covers go on. You could just go. It's wow. like going to band rehearsal. Yeah. No kidding. And you start fucking around and you go right. down the rabbit hole of covers and right. the two two hour rehearsals, now six hours. So <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what about the origin of the name? Like what's 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 the story behind that? Okay. So uh we were just talking to uh Mistress Carrie 
uh, in an interview yesterday about the same thing. And okay. she was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's really important because, you know, it's like naming your kid. You want to give them the wrong name, right. give her the wrong name. So uh, Killington Pitt is, the quick story is that it, it's evolved from Industrial Revolution era, mm. late 1800s, okay. mid, mid to late, yeah, later 1800s, early 1900s. It has to do with coal mining. Mm. There is a town in the UK called Killingsworth. Okay. And Killingsworth had a colliery, and a colliery is basically where there's a coal mine pit. Mm. You're hearing it come together now. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can hear what right. I'm, where I'm headed with this. Yeah, right. So the coal mine pit, the coal mine pit is where they mine the coal in the colliery, which is mm-hmm. all these buildings where they pull it out, extract it from the ground, then they take the coal, they send it to a foundry, and they use mm-hmm. the coal to heat the metal to melt yeah. the metal and forge the metal. It evolves from that whole thing. Billingsworth didn't have the right ring to it, yeah, right. And we're from up in upstate New York and, you know, Vermont and this area. We've got a pretty badass ski mountain here called Killington. Uh-huh. And I just like the sound of it, just the look sure. of it. And yeah. then coal mine pit. And I'm like, ooh, Killington pit. I was like, hey, oh, there you go. We, f- we forge metal. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it really is. It might, oh, be awesome. a, it might be a little bit meathead, but it's also super cool. It's just mm-hmm. like, you know what? That's a badass name. And everybody, everybody's, I said, hey, guys, because we threw a few names around. I right. said, what do you think of this? Everybody's like, dude, that's badass. Yeah. So, kill I mean, it pit. Sounds good and would look good on a t-shirt. Exactly. That's, <laughs> I mean, it's important. You go. Yeah. It's important. Right. Yeah. And then you get the right font, font and you're off and running. You're off and running. <laughs> well, okay. So, uh, more, more, I mean, it sounds like the plan is original material. You're going to eventually also, uh, you know, tackle some more, you know, prob- maiden, it sounds like, but yeah, new yeah. material, original material coming out, physical stuff at some point, uh, keep us posted on that. But um, just real quick, Granny Four Barrel, like, how do you come up with that concept? Because it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Uh... Yeah, that's that's uh, interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, I think going back, I'm like, is wait a minute, this is Terry from Titanium Black, and what the heck is he doing now? I mean, this is yeah, I mean, it's kind of demented in a way. It is, yeah. I love. I'm a big fan of Shock Rock, right? Um, I'm a big fan of Rob Zombie mm-hmm. and Alice Cooper and, and right. just anything like that, uh, and a big horror fan mm. so there's just kind of something percolating around in my brain was at the time well still is that you know it's kind of like this norman bates mm-hmm. kind of character it's like a, you know, I, I have something about a scary old woman a witch right. and so i became this like this character that was reminiscent right. of you remember uh Lo- the looney tunes oh yeah cartoon? Right. There was one cartoon that had some crazy witch. Yes. That, that used to fly away on the broom right. and her hairpins would fall yeah. out. And it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, all that stuff just kind of morphed around. And I was, you know, I'm a 70s yeah. kid. So uh, all the Big Daddy Roth artwork. Oh, yeah. Uh, from, you know, Red Thing mm-hmm. and all that stuff, the hot rods of the things of the sure. bulging eyes, all that yeah. stuff kind of morphed around. And I came up with this character, Granny Forbearer. Wouldn't it be cool? to be some like bad and ass crazy old woman front person. Yeah. And, uh, and that's how it started. And then we had all these uh, array of characters. We right. did, we had that band for 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. We toured all around. We had a, we had a song on Octane, mm-hmm. Vitro Sexy. That was in heavy rotation right. for a while. That was super cool. Um, and granny's still kicking around, but, uh, okay. we got around, hit the pause button on granny. Okay. With, uh, but I feel like she's going to come back at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you probably have to. I mean, at some point. I mean, especially when you had that kind of uh, uh, momentum going in, you know, for the yeah. kind of ten year run on that. But uh, I think you you guys really um, got a little bit of a pop with uh, uh, she likes guns. You know, I mean, yes, that, that too. I mean, so that right. that definitely got you guys on people's radars. 
which I think there was a connection there. I think was it was it Stormy Daniels not in oh, the yeah. video? So I think Storm she directed it, right? <laughs> she did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, how did you, how did you land her to do that? It's like I, I mean, don't know. Yeah, it's like what what path are you? Yeah. Like, how did all these things happen? Yeah, so, no kidding. Todd, yeah, well, that's a that's a Jesse James Dupree oh, uh, connection because okay. I was doing some recording for Granny Four Barrel at Jesse's studio. Oh, like, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Jeff Tomei. Uh huh. Uh, amazing producer, uh, Smashing Pumpkins. Right. Alice and Chase, that guy, Matchbox Twenty. Yep. Um, right. Jeff's amazing. So yeah, when it came time for a video. We tossed around a few ideas. He's like, you know, Stormy, you know, she 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 actually is a director for like rock videos. And I was like, cool. So nice. we made a few phone calls. Next thing you know, we're chilling with Stormy and her crew. Yeah. And uh we're making we're making different kind of videos. We're making <laughs> we're, yeah. we're making rock videos. Right. Well, I mean, it worked out. I I mean, I like the the you know what she brought to the table. I mean, it definitely she was did eye candy on there she not granny but the 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 ladies absolutely well you know what and she you're you're right she did a great she did such a great job on that we've done we've shot a lot of videos with a lot of people i mean those guys work their asses off really not that everybody that we have you know worked with hasn't done that because mm -hmm. they've everyone does but but just the fact just the sit the props everything yeah. that went into it like they built all that stuff. We showed uh -huh. up for the video shoot. It's like, yeah, we built that and we did this. And I'm like, man, you guys are. So a lot of respect for that. Right. For her and her crew. Yeah. Nice. Well, I mean, lots of good stuff happening. I'm I'm loving the covers. I'm sure I'm going to love the original stuff. I can't wait to hear that. But, uh, oh, thank you. you know, uh, we'll plug all this stuff, plug the website, let uh, Chip know that, you know, we had this conversation, pass that along to him. He's always, he's always a good guy. I'm glad you connected with him for this. This is awesome. Yeah. Chip was amazing. Yeah. I, I appreciate him. I've been working with Chip since like, I don't know, I think like 2015 or. Yeah. Cause he, he was the one that was doing the granny four barrel stuff. He was. Yeah. So yep. that's how yep. I was yep. like, oh. and then we had Chip, we had Bob Chip party. Okay. And they bell. Yes. Concrete marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Bob's fantastic. Concrete. Yeah. yeah, lots of good stuff. So, you know, before I cut you loose, one of the things that we do, because this is going to be for We Go to 11, and you probably are aware of Spinal Tap, so you know the kind of reference and the title but um, yeah. of this thing. So, you know, I want, if at all possible, if you can share a Spinal Tap type moment that you've experienced throughout your career, be it with Titanium, be it with Granny, be it with Killington, or you know, shooting the videos or whatever it may be, studio stuff. Wow. Yeah. It kind of put me on the spot. I mean, a spinal tap moment. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, first thing that comes to mind is a granny four barrel show in, um, I think it's Chicago somewhere. I can't remember the club where I'm tour with Texas hippie oh, coalition. Another good We're out in the parking lot in our tour bus and an ice cream truck pulls in to the to the parking lot we're like oh cool go out and get some ice cream it was these two women mm. and um they had the ice you know they had ice cream but our tour manager was like he was like hey ladies he's like it's not the only thing you're selling right we're in chicago we're we're like in, you know in a back parking lot you got an ice cream truck right what, what else are you selling and of course then they just kind of you know looked both ways and revealed a whole like cache of like all kinds of crazy cannabis oh, and um and so like you know you had you, you got your munchies with yeah your, right you know <laughs> with your cannabis and that was pretty outrageous because it was just like unexpected i sure. mean innocently we're like oh cool let's go get some ice cream go get some treats and next thing you know everybody's loading their pockets up with weed and, and you know it's like <laughs> yeah there you go Oh man. Awesome. So, yeah. Hey, listen, so thanks so much. It was a blast to reconnect 20 years. That kind of flew by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm not going to say anything. Hopefully it's not years. another 20 before we connect again. Hopefully I'm we get a chat you, again man. as, as things move forward with the new original material. So absolutely. Whenever awesome. I can. Yeah. Whenever I can grab one of the other guys. So I had yeah. Joy with me 
yesterday with uh, okay. uh, and, and Mistress Carrie. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, that that would that would be awesome, Ruben. It's really good to see you again. Yeah, good to seeing you. I mean, you haven't changed. I've gotten all gray and lost hair and you know, no, no, wet out worse <laughs> eyesight. No, as soon as I saw you, well, I watched. I was like, wait a second, Ruben. So I went on YouTube. The first thing that popped up was uh, an interview you just did with John Karabi. Oh, Karabi. Yeah. Awesome, dude. And I just saw him last week. I was hanging oh, nice. out with him because we're recording in the same studio. But oh, he's wow. in Nashville. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, let's go, Ruben. I was like, yeah, yeah wow. Like, but I couldn't remember how I knew hey, You didn't like, remember. You're like, oh, yeah. Now it all comes together. There you go. I love that. Yeah, it's cool, man. That is awesome. Thanks so much, man. <laughs> You're Thank, welcome, buddy. Yeah, we'll connect again, man. This was fun. It was fun. Great to see you. Thank you so much.